Good morning. This is a video for uh, section 3.1, day two. The It's uh, this day here, day 1.5. So we're going to continue activity seven and continue with definitions of limits of derivatives. Activity seven would be due tomorrow <clears throat> by three. We'll start activity eight tomorrow and uh, it'll post sometime today. Then uh, we'll continue throughout the week with derivatives and turn in activity eight on Friday. Couple things. First, <clears throat> your uh, topic. If you click your textbook, please read through section three point one. Uh, it gives you good language on what's happening with the derivative up through um, slopes of secant lines, average rate of change, uh, tangent lines, and then specifically uh, working through equations of tangent lines, like we had here we did stuff like that last week on friday <clears throat> then it gives us our two definitions for limit definition of a derivative one definition is here then um previous definition i believe was no both definitions are right here so friday we worked with this definition uh definition one today we'll work with this definition definition two let's go to your notes for today <clears throat> And the daily problems asking you one way to interpret f prime of a is the limit as x goes to a f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. We talked about that on Friday. Give two other representations. I'm going to pause the video and let you think about that, and then we'll come back. Okay. Two other representations of f prime of a besides the limit definition of uh, those slopes of secant lines or the slope or uh, the average rate of change one f prime of a f prime of a is how fast f changes at x equals a or how steep the function is at x equals a uh, f prime of a f prime of a is also the slope of the tangent line to the function f at location x equals a that uh, a is a specific x input location uh, in other words it's the point a f of a then on Friday, we looked at, say, f prime of 3 for a function 1 over x plus 2. That's asking you, again, find the slope of the tangent line to this graph uh, at 3. So if we graphed the function, here's the graph of 1 over x plus 2, 1 over x plus 2. <clears throat> and then if we look at the point 3 or the location x equals 3, then here's the blue tangent line. And then calculating this limit definition would give us the slope of the blue line. Let's do that quick. So if we calculate f prime, here let's use blue since that's the slope of the line, um, f prime of 3, that would be limit as x goes to 3. The function minus the function output x minus 3, that's limit x goes to 3. The function is 1 over x plus 2. The output would be 1 fifth um, x minus 3 in the denominator. <clears throat> this is indeterminate. This is a limit you should know how to handle. I'm going to pause the video, let you work on it, and then I'll work on it, and we'll see where we get. Okay, let's look. Once you find a common denominator in the numerator, that should be x plus 2 and a 5, and then the numerator is adjusted by the 1 became a 5. This one became an x plus 2, all divided by x minus 3 is your main division bar. And that main division bar turns into a copy dot flip, and it keeps the x minus 3 in the denominator <clears throat> with these other two factors. Then we're going to cancel the 3 minus x and the x minus 3, and you can do that as long as they're opposites which they are. So if you take out a negative one, you'd have negative one, <clears throat> then the x minus three, these x minus threes cancel. We can evaluate the three into the x here. So this would give us negative one over three plus two times five. That's negative one twenty-fifth. This is our Your book's going to refer to it as M tangent. 
Okay, so the slope of the blue line turns out to be negative 1 25th. Now, um, in general, let's start to cook up a second definition. But before we do that, let's uh, show how our first definition came to work out. If we have um, some graph F, we have a point A, we have some point further down the road X <clears throat> or some other place on the uh, x-axis, then this point would be the point A, F of A, and then this point up here would be the point X, F of X. Then when we look at the tangent line, sorry, the secant line through those points, it would be the pink line here. There's our secant line, and we know that the average rate of change over the point a to x would be the outputs change over the inputs change. And then if we wanted the actual limit definition of a derivative, let's do that here. Then if we wanted the slope of the tangent line, that's our tangent line, then all we need to do <clears throat> is take, whoops, take our average rate of change, let's copy that. Paste that. Let's move the slope of the secant line over. Let's put in now limit as X goes to A and then all of a sudden we no longer have average rate of change from X to A. We have instantaneous rate of change at the point x equals a. That's our definition number one. Definition number one. For a second definition, let's <clears throat> take that picture. Let's move it down here. And same picture, same situation. We're just going to rename something. We're going to rename this distance from A to X as distance H. And if we do that, then we rename X um, as, how else could we rewrite X? X is, uh, let's see. So if here's the origin, X represents the distance from the origin out to x and we have this distance here we have a distance a then we have a distance h right here so x is the distance a plus h so we're going to write a plus and i'm going to use a red h just to indicate that then let's go through the problem <clears throat> and rewrite those x's x is then a plus H, comma, F of A plus H. And then now let's rewrite our definition. We had uh, definition one. <clears throat> instantaneous. Oh, let me copy that actually. Let me take definition one. Put it down here. And then let's rename our things. We said um, X was A plus H. So let's say we have the limit as X goes to A. Um, X is A plus H. This X right there became A plus H. We still have minus F of A. <clears throat> X plus H in the denominator, or X minus A in the denominator, the X becomes A plus H. We have minus A. And then let's simplify our quotient. We'd have F of A plus H minus F of A all over uh, the two A's would cancel out. Two A's go away, <clears throat> and we're left just with H. Then on our limit, instead of saying X goes to A, we're really considering that H 
this distance as x goes to a h goes to zero so as x goes to a h goes to zero so h goes to zero this is our definition number two so f prime of a <clears throat> the slope of the tangent line at a limit as h goes to zero f of a plus h minus f of a all over h this is definition number two so we have two definitions now we have your <clears throat> limit definition x goes to a of the slope of secant lines f of x minus f of a all over x minus a and now we have definition number two limit as h goes to zero it's still the slope of secant lines but it's just tweaked a little different um, to have only an h in the denominator so the uh, the catch, I guess, is that if we're finding, what did we find in the beginning? The steepness of the curve to 1 over x plus 2, 1 over x plus 2 at 3, we could find it this way with this limit definition. We could also find it with the new definition here. So if we do that, I'll show you and then we'll be done. So if we write f prime of 3. That would be the limit as h goes to zero, f of three plus h minus f of three all over h. And then you work out your limit, the limit going to zero, f of three plus h would be this function, one over x plus two, but with a three plus h in for the input. So it'd be the one, the plus two, and then the x becomes a three plus h minus f of three is still a fifth. We're dividing by h limit h to zero. Let's uh, simplify these fractions. Again, we're going to have to do that because this is an indeterminate form. We get zero over zero. So this would be one over five plus h minus a fifth, all divided by h. Find a common denominator in your fractions. That's going to be five minus the quantity five plus h all over five plus h times five, and then when you do the division, that extra h, this h here, ends up down there. That's a trick you need to pay attention to that happened up here in your daily problem. Notice <clears throat> the x minus three ended up right there next to the five. You can get in the habit of doing that rather than doing uh, copy dot flip all the time. So we'd have limit h to zero. Uh, notice in the numerator, the two fives cancel. That leaves you with a negative h when you distribute the negative. Negative h, five plus h, five, and an h. The two h's cancel, leaves you with a negative one in the numerator. And then when you evaluate h going to zero, that h goes to zero and we get negative one over five times five. And again, negative the 25th for the slope of our tangent line back up here, the blue line there. Thank you. Okay, let's finish up. What did we just do? We had a function, 1 over x plus 2. We wanted to know the derivative at 3, the derivative at that specific input. Again, if we drew a tangent line at the input, and measure the slope of that tangent line. That's what f prime of three is giving us. That's what f prime of three is. It tells us how steep the graph is right there. We found that with the uh, definition number one that we've been using then, and it was negative a 25th. Um, then uh, notice the definition again was, uh, it led us to an indeterminate limit. We had uh, fractions. We know our trick to get out of that is to, uh, or to handle the indeterminate form, is to go find common denominator with the fractions and simplify those. We did that. Then we explained how our definition number one comes to be through that uh, function f, the point a f of a and x f of x. Then we took that same picture, adjusted it a little bit. All we did was rename the distance from a to x as h. Uh, rename x as a plus h, and then adjust our definition accordingly. 
We had definition number two. This is going to be a more popular definition. We'll explain that tomorrow in class. Uh, it'll be a way to actually find the derivative of a function as a function itself, uh, not just a value slope of a tangent line. Then we repeated the problem, um, finding f prime of three for the function one over x plus two, but we use the other definition this time. Still indeterminate, still similar math. Uh, we had to find a common denominator and simplify those fractions. The only difference is uh, we have a different denominator. It's h, and we have an h floating around uh, in the 3 plus h part of the function. We had an h right there. Then uh, every single time you're trying to cancel the h from the denominator somehow, and usually that involves uh, canceling it with an h from the numerator. Then notice again we got negative a 25th. Okay, last thing, I'll mention this, and that's your activity. If you look at activity seven, um, you have enough information to handle everything now. So again, you can do number one. Uh, you could do number two. Uh, I posted a video about maybe just do number 2A, and then we can ha handle 2B tomorrow in class or something, um, just because I want to show you. Oh, and actually, uh, this is an old copy. Let's go. Activity seven. Should be a new copy here. <clears throat> yeah, so your edited copy has an A plus H in here asking you to work out uh, these X plus three or X cubed and X to the 17 with an A plus H in your definition for the limit definition. Um, we can handle 2B tomorrow, but yeah, please try 2A. Then uh, you can handle question three asking you about what a definition is helpful for. Four you can handle, five you can handle, Six, you can handle now with your limit definition. Um, and uh, then 7A, we did 7B on Friday. Okay, um, I'm going to send an email in just a minute or post an announcement with this video, as well as some instructions for Zooming in today. All right, y'all take care, and uh, I'll be in touch.